on the next planet into which the Earth will transform itself, and which is called Jupiter in mystery science. Then man will be able to enter into intercourse with beings which are completely hidden from his present sensory perception. It will be understood that not only does the light of perception thereby become totally different, but that actions, feelings, and all relations to the environment are completely transformed. While today man can consciously influence only sensory beings, he will then be able to act consciously on very different forces and powers. He himself will receive what to him will be fully recognizable influences from very different realms than at present. At that stage there can no longer be any question of birth and death in the present sense. Birth, death, occurs only because the consciousness has to depend on an external world with which it enters into communication through the physical sense organs. When these physical sense organs fail, every relation to the environment ceases. That is to say, the man has died. However, when his soul is so far advanced that it does not receive the influences of the outside world through physical instruments, but receives them through the images which the soul creates out of itself, then it will have reached the point where it can regulate its intercourse with the environment independently, that is, its life will not be interrupted against its will. It has become lord over birth and death. All this will come to be with the developed self-conscious image consciousness on Jupiter. This state of the soul is also called the psychic consciousness. The next condition of consciousness to which man develops on a further planet, Venus, is distinguished from the previous one by the fact that the soul can now create not only images, but also objects and beings. This occurs in the self-conscious object consciousness or suprapsychic consciousness. Through the image consciousness man can perceive something of supersensible beings and objects, and he can influence them through the awakening of his image conceptions. But in order for that to take place which he desires of such a supersensible being, at his instigation, this being must use its own forces. Thus man is the ruler over images, and he can produce effects through these images. But he is not yet lord over the forces themselves. When his self-conscious object consciousness is developed, he will also be ruler over the creative forces of other worlds. He will not only perceive and influence beings, but he himself will create. This is the course of the development of consciousness. At first it begins dimly. One perceives nothing of other objects and beings, but only the inner experiences, images, of one's own soul, then perception is developed. At last the perceptive consciousness is transformed into a creative one. Before the condition of Earth goes over into the life of Jupiter, after the fourth earthly cycle, there are three more smaller cycles to be passed through. These serve for the further perfection of the consciousness of Earth in a manner to be described in the following essays, when the development of the smaller cycles and of their subdivisions will be described for all seven planets. When, after a period of rest for Laia, Earth has changed into Jupiter, and when man has arrived on the latter planet, then the four preceding conditions, Saturn, Sun, Moon, and Earth condition, must again be repeated during four smaller cycles, and only during the fifth cycle of Jupiter does man attain the stage which has been described above as the real Jupiter consciousness. In a corresponding manner does the Venus consciousness, 
appear during the sixth cycle of Venus. A fact which will play a certain role in the following essays will be briefly indicated here. This concerns the speed with which the development on the different planets takes place. For this is not the same on all the planets. Life proceeds with the greatest speed on Saturn. The rapidity then decreases on the Sun, becomes still less on the Moon and reaches its slowest phase on the Earth. On the latter it becomes slower and slower, to the point at which self-consciousness develops. Then the speed increases again. Therefore, today man has already passed the time of the greatest slowness of his development. Life has begun to accelerate again. On Jupiter the speed of the moon, on Venus that of the sun will again be attained. The last planet which can still be counted among the series of earthly transformations, and hence follows Venus, is called, Vulcan, by mystery science. On this planet the provisional goal of the development of mankind is attained. The condition of consciousness into which man enters there is called, piety, or spiritual consciousness. Man will attain it in the seventh cycle of Vulcan after a repetition of the six preceding stages. Not much can be publicly communicated about the life on this planet. In mystery science one speaks of it in such a way that it is said, no soul which, with its thinking is still tied to a physical body, should reflect about Vulcan and its life. That is, only the mystery students of the higher order, who may leave their physical body and can acquire supersensible knowledge outside of it, can learn something about Vulcan. The seven stages of consciousness are thus expressed in the course of the development of mankind in seven planetary developments. At each stage, the consciousness must now pass through seven subordinate conditions. These are realized in the smaller cycles already mentioned. In theosophical writings these seven cycles are called, rounds. These subordinate states are called, conditions of life, by the mystery science of the Occident, in contrast with the superordinated, conditions of consciousness.